Yo, so guys, welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to something that I wasn't really planning on doing, but it just popped up on my feed, and it's how Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and the UK are secretly forming one global superpower. Kanzuk. So Canada, New Zealand, UK. Where's Australia? <laughs> AU, I guess. Australia. Um, yeah, I've uh, never heard of this in my life. Just the topic intrigues me because I don't think really know how this is going to work. But I mean, fuck it. I mean, I'm, I don't know how this is going to go down. Maybe people aren't interested in this sort of reaction, but I feel like it's going to be fun to see. But yeah, man, I mean, maybe you know about this as well. I don't, I don't really know what to expect, like I said already, but I'm sure it's an interesting sort of story. And yeah, I'm interested to see how it works. But quick shout out to my Instagram and my Twitter. Links in the description for those interested in following. Same for my Patreon links or there for those interested. But let's jump into this, man. I'm intrigued to see how just how this actually works. This is the country of Cambodia. It is a small to mid-sized country. Wait, what the fuck? Why can't I hear it? With a population of just oh. over 15 million people and is Don't located in the southern portion of the Indochina Peninsula in Southeast Asia. Now, during most of the 20th century, Cambodia was an extremely poor and relatively weak country in regards to its economy and military. In fact, in 1998, after three consecutive years of economic contraction, the country had a GDP per capita of just $269, making it one of the poorest countries on the planet. You see, because Cambodia was a poor and somewhat small country, it gave them no sway on the global stage in regards to trade, politics, military, and economics. So that was why the country decided to try something different. In 1961, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, or simply Asian, was created by Thailand, the Philippines, and Malaysia. Essentially, this was a union created to help accelerate economic growth, social progress, and cultural development in the region, while also helping promote regional... They are a lot more closer to each other. The UK, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand, you couldn't be further apart. You got one in North America, you got one in Europe, you got one right... Well, in Oceania, both of them in Oceania, just in the middle of nowhere compared to, I mean, they're all in the middle of nowhere to be fair, but like... No ...peace, while giving these smaller nations a much no, no, no. larger say on the global stage. Now, also a side note is that this was also formed out of a fear of growing communist regimes in nearby countries, such as China, but I will leave that for another video. But in a sense, this new Southeast Asian Union allowed for small and poor countries to gain political and economic independence from nearby superpowers. And over the next several decades, other Southeast Asian nations would join, such as Indonesia, Singapore, Brunei, Laos, Myanmar, and Vietnam. And all along the way, this new union strengthened the economies of each one of these nations while also proving to be a somewhat unified political entity as they showed a unified response to many political threats and wars over the last 60 years. And so, that is why in 1999, Cambodia decided to join this new political union. And since then, Cambodia has seen its economy move from a level of extreme poverty to that of a developing nation albeit still a relatively poor and small nation on its own. However, the Asian Union has seen its economic influence grow over the past decade. In fact, this union now has between the fifth and seventh largest amount of economic influence in the entire world, depending on what metric you use. And if that is what a collection of somewhat poor Southeast Asian nations could do, imagine what would happen if four very wealthy nations were to form a new union of their own. A union that would act in a similar way with unified global plans for their militaries, economies, politics, trade, and even citizenship. That's why right now we could be seeing the creation of a new global force. He said I could travel to Australia and be a citizen. I could be a citizen of Australia. Yes, please. Right before Canada. Yes, please. Eyes. In the early 1800s, New Zealand was a largely unpopulated series of islands, with the exception of the Maori natives. Australia had just a few thousand British settlers, 40% of which were prisoners, and Canada was filled with a few hundred thousand British and French loyalists that simply did not want to live in America after the Revolutionary War. But then, during the 1800s, these three young nations would begin to go through a massive change. Within the following decades, they slowly began to become more populated, wealthy, and would eventually become part of the Commonwealth of Countries under the British Empire. 
Now, these three nations at the time were not viewed as the most valuable possessions of the British Empire. India, for example, had over 200 million people within its borders, and was one of the largest economies in the world while being ruled by the British. This led to India being named the Jewel of the Crown. There were also some other nations that were in a more valuable geographical location for the British. Egypt, along with parts of China and Indonesia, were viewed as more valuable colonies of the British Empire at the time due to their proximity to trade routes, trade partners, and strategic militaristic locations. But over the next 100 years, the British Empire would begin to fall, as virtually every country that was previously under British rule soon declared their own independence and moved away from the enforced British culture. Well, that was except for a few. You see, even after declaring independence from Britain, many of these nations kept their British traditions and even made their own political association called the Commonwealth of Nations. And three of these nations that have kept a lot of their old British traditions are Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. You see, even though each one of these countries has their own unique culture, they are quite similar in a sense where if you were to take someone from a city like Sydney, Australia, and plop them down into a city like Toronto, their daily life, the laws they live under, and their social norms wouldn't be that different. And that point will become very important in just a minute. So let's fast forward to something recent, Brexit. On January 31st of 2020, the United Kingdom officially ratified an agreement to leave the European Union. Now, before Brexit, on paper, the EU had the second largest amount of economic influence in the world behind the United States and slightly ahead of China. But the UK was the second largest economy in the European Union behind Germany, so when the UK decided to leave, the European Union fell behind China in terms of global economic influence. But now there is a new union being proposed by some of the top political leaders in the countries of Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and the UK. They're proposing a new union called Kanzuk. Now this proposed union is endorsed by the Prime Minister of the UK, Boris Johnson, the leader of the Conservative Party of Canada, Aaron O'Toole, and a multitude of senators and MPs from Australia and New Zealand. So that brings up a few questions. What is this union and what are the ramifications for it on the global scale? Well, the idea is to form a union that would increase trade, That's foreign cool policy <laughs> cooperation, military cooperation, and mobility of citizens between these nations. Essentially, on a global mobility of people from nation from nation to nation. Oh, sounds global interesting. scale. These four countries would try to act more as one bigger nation versus four smaller ones. So the ramifications of this could be massive. Out of these four countries, the UK has the largest economy and the sixth largest economy in the world. Canada is next, having the 10th largest economy in the world. Australia is close behind with the 14th largest economy. And New Zealand is a distant 51st in terms of size of its economy, largely due to its small population. Now, when you take into account the size of these economies, along with general economic and political influence, then this new proposed union would likely become the second most powerful union in the world behind the EU. And this would also make it the fourth largest economic engine in the world just behind China. Now, this union would also have the fifth strongest military force in the world, and it would control the largest amount of land and resources on Earth as well. So undoubtedly, if this union were to happen, then we would immediately see a new superpower take its place on the global stage. And one thing that might make this union act more as one singular cohesive nation than other unions like the European Union is this. As I already mentioned before, these countries are very similar in terms of their governments, culture, quality of life, healthcare, wealth, and even language. In fact, these are four of the most similar nations in the world. But yet, if you were to take a look at the European Union, you have 27 different countries, 24... Many different languages, different cultures, I see that. But I also enjoy that. I also, I've also seen like, I like the idea of just different cultures and not everything being the same. But I guess in terms for it to work, that's sort of what is different here. official languages and completely different governments, laws, and cultures. So the EU on its surface has always been more about trade and mobility, yet Kanzuk would likely be more than that. If you were to take a look at the voting records at the United Nations, New Zealand, Australia, Canada, and the UK almost always vote in the same way, yet the countries in the European Union are almost never completely unified in their votes. And that's one of the reasons why this might be a union that we have never really seen before. 
one where four separate countries could have all of the benefits of a union like the European Union, but also be an order of magnitude more cohesive than any other union in history. Now to this point I've only really mentioned how powerful this union could be, but there are a few major things that are worth noting before we move forward. One of which is that a key reason as to why some politicians in New Zealand, Australia, and Canada want this union to go forward is to simply get off of China. You see, I've mentioned in previous videos about how China is essentially trying to control pretty much everything from ports to manufacturing to trade. China also has a much different government, laws, and culture than the Kanzuk countries. And that is one of the reasons why the former Conservative Party of Canada leader Andrew Scheer became outspoken about a Kanzuk deal. He said a few years ago, I very much support a trade deal with those countries. Australia, New Zealand, and the UK have a similar basis of law, they have a common democratic system, they have the same types of legislation and regulations around investment and trade. Those are the types of things we don't enjoy with China. So, in theory, if a Kanzuk deal could help Canada and the rest of the Kanzuk countries get off of the control of Chinese trade and manufacturing, then many politicians and the public in Kanzuk countries would likely support this deal. And there have also been many politicians come out and say that this deal would help get off Middle Eastern and Russian oil, which is also viewed as a positive for the Kanzuk nations as well. Now, so far there has been overwhelming public support in each one of these countries. As the UK polls show 68% in favor of Kanzuk, Australia shows 73% support, Canada is at 76%, and New Zealand is at 82%. Now that brings up the question, with such overwhelming support for this new union, why hasn't this union happened yet? Well one of the reasons is that the benefits of this union might not be as great as they seem. Sure there would be some surefire upside things like being able to work or live in any of these countries without that needing a permit. Sick. There would that also would be, be cool. a political and militaristic union, which would certainly be an upside as well. But one of the core touted benefits, trade, might be a lot more difficult than some people Well, because they're so far from each other once think. again. And to find the reason as to why this is, all we have to do is look at a map. Do you notice any potential problems with having trade deals between these four countries? Well, as you might have noticed, apart from New Zealand and Australia, these nations are pretty much on opposite sides of the planet from one another. In fact, the cities of Perth, Australia and Toronto, Canada are almost exactly on opposite sides of the planet. And the same goes for the cities of Southland, New Zealand and London, England. Jeez. All this means is that trade between these four nations may not pick up that much, even if a favorable trade deal were to be in place. But that doesn't mean that an increase in trade wouldn't happen at all. And this is simply due to the fact that Canada and Australia are big, very big. You see, even though the distance between Toronto and Perth is a whopping 18,100 kilometers, or nearly half the circumference of the Earth, the distance between the port of Vancouver and Brisbane is only about 11,800 kilometers, which is actually a fairly reasonable distance for a trade route. And from Canada's perspective, they could reasonably up their trade volume with Australia while downing their trade volume with China. This is because on average it takes a ship from China 22 days to reach the port of Vancouver, yet it takes about 27 days for a ship to travel from Australia to the port of Vancouver. A difference of only about 5 days would not mean that much when transporting large bulk resources from country to country. And when you also take into account that eastern provinces of Canada, like Nova Scotia, are only about 4,600 kilometers away from London, England, that could mean that a trade deal between Canada and the UK would have a lot more upside than critics think. In fact, the trade routes which would likely be economically unviable for a Kanzuk deal would be trade between the UK and either Australia or New Zealand. So now that brings up the question, how likely is it that this union will actually happen? And well, it really depends. As mentioned earlier, Boris Johnson is already a fan of this union. The Conservative Party of Canada, who could possibly win the next election, is for this union as well. Scott Morrison, who is the Prime Minister of Australia, was actually against this union two years ago, but has become a lot more open to this agreement in the last few months, but doesn't necessarily want to include Canada yet. And lastly, the oh, former wow. leader of the opposition, or the now What's the hatred for Canada, man? Come on. party of New Zealand, Simon Bridges, has mean? also voiced his support for this potential union as well. So all in all, what is the likelihood of Kanzuk actually happening? Well, it's tough to say. Even though there is growing public support for this union, it has not garnered quite enough political support yet. 
But considering that enough major political parties in all of these countries support Kanzuk, it is quite possible that if the stars align, then sometime within the next decade, we could see the creation of one of the most cohesive and powerful unions in the world today. So I'd like to know, what are your thoughts on Kanzuk? Do you think it'll happen? And if it does, what do you think the global ramifications of it would be? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, please hit that notification bell and subscribe if you want to see my next video, which should be out fairly soon. And remember to leave a like and check out my documentaries playlist as I have a ton of- Good little video, man. I've never heard of this before, and being someone from the UK, maybe I could have. And this was, video was nearly made a year ago, like 10 months ago, so... Maybe it's advanced since this video came out, but... Yeah, man, this should be called The Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> Let's bring the band back together, boys. <laughs> As an American, I would actually love this. Our ally strengthening is never a bad thing. Hope y'all from these four countries can pull, pull through on this. I mean, yeah, you still see US number one. The fact that these four countries come together and the US is still ahead goes to show, but the fact that there'll be allies and if this would benefit these countries, then I don't see why it'd be a negative thing. I'm in the UK. My wife's born... Is my, my wife's family is from Canada. I have many cousins living in Australia and there are streets in New Zealand bearing my family saying we should do this. I've got a bit of family in Australia as well, actually, so... Australian here, it would be great to be more easily... It would be great to more easily be... It would be great to more easily be able to travel to Canada and the UK. I'm not sure how good of a deal Kansas would give us Aussies, but I'm hopeful. I think Canada will, will have to invest heavily into their cricket team if this is going to happen. <laughs> they, every, every other one loves their cricket, but I guess Canada ain't, ain't about it, right? A Brit Aussie, a Kiwi, and a Canadian walk into a bar, good times. As an Australian, I already see all these countries as our closest nations and friends. A Brit here, I, have, I give the entire concept two thumbs up. But I mean, yeah, I don't know what's happening with this, to be honest. I mean, maybe it's not advanced at all, maybe this has just sort of fell apart, but maybe it hasn't. Maybe it's sort of advancing and behind closed doors is actually getting somewhere, but who knows? Maybe if you know a bit more about this, let me know in the comments, right? But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this reaction more on the way, and yeah, I mean, until next time, like, subscribe.